Hi everybody. So I have had a very busy last few weeks. Um, so I wanted to do kind of an overall everything I've been up to video. Uh, this will feature a lot of eel pit. I get my two other sturgeon. Uh, I move my platinum alligator gar down. Uh, I upgrade my Australian lungfish. So yeah, that was right after we left the sturgeon farm. Then we visited our favorite uh, platinum squirrel, leucistic squirrel in New York before flying home. Actually, we drove home this time. Uh, I was helping my girlfriend move from Brooklyn, New York, all the way down to Sarasota, Florida. So, exciting news. I'll have a lot more Florida content coming soon. Uh, but here is one of my diamond sturgeon. Had to go check on the eel pit right when I got home. See Creeb down there in the bowl, eating all the pellets from Caviar and Roe. That's the diamond sturgeon's names. Then here comes Mentally Eel. But yeah, the way we spaced out the move is uh, I spent a week in New York, then a week at home, and then a week in Florida. So while I was here, I was waiting for my uh, Stellatus sturgeon and the albino sterlet to arrive. But yeah, the eel pit's been doing amazing. This is actually a little bit cloudier than it normally is. But you can see still crystal clear water for the most part. You're looking through 12 feet of water right here, so it's going to look a little hazy. But when you look straight down, you can really see everything. The crab trying to defend the pellets. Those guys are hilarious when they try to fight with the fish. But of course, these big sturgeon just bulldoze them right out of the way when they want the pellets. But yeah, while I was home, I did a little bit of fish collecting. Not keeping anything, just seeing what was out there. You can see there's some kind of baby buffalo or something like that. That was probably the most exciting find to me. Little Mad Toms, Baby Bass, Northern Hog Sucker here. All just little tiny guys. Guys that were probably just born this summer in this little offshoot of the river. Yeah, just looking around. Then here's one of the crabs. He was coming up on land, so I decided to give him a fish. Super cool when they come up. You can see one of the eels in the background there. Yeah, I do add live fish for the wild caught gar to eat. And uh, I caught this pickerel maybe two months back. Uh, my friend was gonna take him, but now I'm not sure what I'm doing with him. Still cool to see, his name is Pickle. And uh, yeah, he's still only on live, I'm trying to get him on pellets. He will switch over eventually though. Then they arrived. So this is really scary to me. That was the Stellatus sturgeon. You can see the albino sterlet, calm as could be in the bag, but the Stellatus did not ship well. Um, he came out of the bag barrel rolling uh, they're a really high oxygen demand fish, so unfortunately they are one that is very hard to ship. Uh, especially the Stellatus in particular are pretty sensitive. All the other sturgeon are somewhat hardier, but the Staries are do have a reputation for uh, being much more delicate. But yeah, you can see this is the first 15-20 uh, minutes out of the bag. He was not looking good. But eventually he did kind of come around and... Uh, it's three weeks later now, and he's still doing totally fine, so he did come through this. But you can see just the discoloration on the face, uh, the red on his belly earlier. Just really stressed out from shipping. But that that is the, the risk we run when shipping big fish. I did pull out this... Uh, that was actually where my old filter used to sit on those cinder blocks on the left, just so it kind of had a better turn radius when he was barrel rolling around. And uh, I think this was the next morning where he's kind of calmly swimming around, looking much better. But yeah, you can just see the difference. When he was came out of that bag spinning, I was I was pretty much expecting to be dead within the hour. Then here is Crunchwrap Supreme, uh, also picking a fight with a crab. But the crabs are so big and the eels are pretty harmless, so no real risks between them. It's interesting to see the crab swim. But then on to Florida. So this is a Bahama anole or a brown anole and it actually regenerated a second tail. So something must have attacked it and like broken the bone in the tail. Uh, so then the lizard's body thinks it lost its tail so it grows a second split tail. Uh, then this is a Seminole bat. This was on 4th of July in Tampa. Uh, I think he probably got hit by a firework or something. Um, he was alive. Uh, I talked to one of my bat friends. 
and he did have a broken wing. So he did disappear. I'm not sure where he went. Uh, we came back about an hour later to the same spot and he was gone. Um, maybe something ate him. Maybe he climbed up a tree. Then these here are all little pipefish that we caught in the seagrass uh, right off the beach in Sarasota. Super cool. We were hoping for a seahorse, but didn't see any. Then there's a little tiny Atlantic spade fish there too. Yeah, lots of little pipe fish. Yeah, and that was just, I mean, 10 feet off the beach we caught those. Then we waited till night and went back out, and I managed to snag this uh, Atlantic toadfish in my tiny little dip net. They're always a fun one. They have such personalities when you catch them. Uh, you can see he spiked me on his fins there. But yeah, they definitely try to bite, and they'll croak and bark at you. Such interesting, fi weird, weird fish. Mouthful of teeth, and they're not afraid to use it. Then this is probably my favorite fish of the Florida trip. This is a leopard sea robin. Um, so they've got those big wings on the side to make themselves look bigger. But then they actually walk on the bottom with those modified ray fins uh, that actually kind of work as fingers. So they scuttle along the bottom. Not too many fish out there doing that. And if they are, they're probably related to these guys. Yeah, such a weird... I mean, the head shape on them, everything about them is weird. And the leopard sea robins specifically have those really beautiful fins. Uh, but there's flying gunnards, uh, there's sea goblins. There's a bunch of different fish that are in this family. Then these are lined killifish? Or no, long-nosed, long-nosed killifish. Uh, we caught them in it's pretty much full salt water right on the beach. And then we saw some wild parrots, uh, Nande parakeets, I believe is what these are. Green with the black head. Super cool guys. It's just so crazy to see parrots flying around Florida. And then uh, I stepped in an ant nest at the very same time we saw those. So that one hurt a little. Uh, but then we were on our way home. Uh, we stopped in Atlanta, Georgia, just to check out the aquarium in the morning. But uh, of course, if I'm in a new area, I'm gonna go out at night and see what I can see. So these are a species of flatback millipede. I find these all over the country, uh, but they fluoresce super brightly blue under UV light which is super cool to see. Nothing else like it. It's a 365 nanometer black light. Uh, the regular, like, real purple black lights don't do it as well. Uh, it's too much visible light, so this is more UV light. Uh, but then we made it home, and checking out the sturgeon, everyone is doing good. There is vanilla bean, the albino sturlet. And then here is the starry stur sturgeon, and his name is Seagull. <laughs> so this is a week after I got him. And you can see he's definitely calmed down. The discoloration on his head went away. And he is swimming just nice and calm, doing what sturgeon should do. Uh, the water temperature down here is about 73 right now. And the sturgeon love it, that high oxygen. These guys look amazing together. I love the black and white. Um, I'm thinking about rehoming Caviar and Row. It is getting a little crowded. Um, I did actually rehome Garth Brooks. That'll be a little later in the video. But yeah, I just love seeing these guys swimming back and forth. An occasional crab walking through frame. I really love Vanilla Bean, the albino sterlet. I think she might be my favorite in the pit right now. Such a cool fish. Another fish project that was overdue to happen is I did upgrade my Australian lungfish uh, from a 40 breeder into a 75 gallon. And once the gar are out of the 500 gallon, I might just move them over into the 500 gallon. Um, I kind of got that 500 with him in mind for it, so. If it's going to be empty, I may as well put him in. But yeah, this is him in the 75 gallon. This is probably my favorite animal in the world. Uh, the Australian lungfish, they're like a salamander with fins. Really like a lizard with fins with those giant scales. The forelimbs, the, they come up and breathe air. Such amazing fish. Uh, my friends over at Global Fish Company uh, in New Jersey also sent me some fish. Huge shout out to them. These are really, really rare. This is a predatory carp. Uh, I'm calling them carpin. Uh, they are a carp species that pretty much evolved to fill the same role as a tarpon in the rivers of Asia. So they're a cold water carp, uh, but they look and act like tarpon. And they get about three foot long, I want to say. It's really hard to find good information on these guys. Uh, but this might be a future eel pit member once they grow. I'll probably keep them with mango. 
uh, once they quarantine in here. But uh, then I did upgrade my eel pit filtration. So I added this 55 gallon drums and filled it with pot scrubbers and bio balls. And yeah, this clip is rehoming Garth Brooks. Again, sorry, this video is just all over the place, but I had all these clips and I figured the best way to get this out in time would just be do it in chronological order. So I just went through my phone and added every clip and voiced over. But yeah, this is my buddy's pond. Uh, perfect for Garth Brooks. So I'm going to be moving garlic into the eel pit and it definitely will get crowded with all these big fish. So went ahead and gave him Garth Brooks. But yeah, he's got this little above ground. It's uh, cinder blocks and a pond liner. And the water stays crystal clear. He's got a really nice uh, 55 gallon drum bog filter. He's also got this super cool indoor pond where he just kind of keeps a mix of community fish. Some of the dojo loaches from when I got that huge batch of dojo loaches in. Uh, parrotfish, garamis, swordtails, a little bit of everything. There's actually a little tiny needlefish in here even. But yes, on to the second part of this video. The main thing I want to get out is I did move garlic into the eel pit. Um, you can see his spine's about as healed as it will be. Um, he gets around fine, but he's actually been attacking uh, Garfield in here. And uh, you can see he's actually got a downward bent spine, uh, snout. Um, I believe that's from inbreeding, just with how they line breed the albinos. Um, the platinums they've been working with a lot longer, so their genetics are a little better. Uh, but the albinos, they're still kind of hit and miss, I think. Gar, I've had a lot of issues with Gar. I'm, I'm done spending a, a lot of money on Gar, but I do absolutely love these two, especially garlic. Garlic is probably my second favorite fish I have after mango. And you can see some of the big bichers in the 500 gallon. But yeah, uh, netting him out of here actually went super smoothly, smoother than I expected. He covered me in water, but as little stress as possible, I would say, when moving a fish this size. Then uh, I just floated him in the white tote um, above ground where I kind of have my grow out. So that's the nice part about that is because I have access to the water up top now, I can just acclimate fish up top and then net them out and move them down. And that's exactly what we did. So got him in the big dip net. You can see he's a little stressed out. So in the really bright white fish, it's actually, you can see like their fins will turn red and when they're not happy, but he was only in there for about 15, 20 minutes while I let him temperature acclimate. Uh, but yeah, immediately went to the bottom and laid down, not happy. But yeah, from the top, he doesn't look like he's got that bent back. Um, and I think over time, it'll probably even get a little bit better. But you can really see here how he swims with it. But not bad at all. He doesn't really need to swim quick for any reason, so he gets around just fine. And a couple hours later, he's actually grouped up with the other gar in the back. Uh, the three spotted gar, Jason, Gardos, and Garchomp doing totally fine with them um, you can see he's actually bigger than uh, the other two smaller ones and he's about the same size as Jason Jason might be a little bit longer uh, but yeah he's already coming up and eating that'll be in my next eel pit video I'll really show off garlic in the pit um, but my next video will be going to conservation fisheries uh, down in Knoxville Tennessee and seeing all the it's a basically they breed endangered stream fish and help restock native populations so they have a lot of insane, insane uh, native fish to see. Some of the most beautiful fish I've ever seen, really. And they do amazing work down there. Um, but yeah, that does it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry it's been so long since an actual video came out. Uh, I just recorded this the other day. You can see the long ear sunfish doing great with all the uh, sturgeon in the pit. But yeah, I love the two new additions. All right, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody.